We're going to talk about a really important concept called net present value, which is really uh, one of the key concepts that you take away from studying introductory finance. So when we talk about net present value, well, what, what do we mean here? What are we talking about from a conceptual point of view? Well, we're talking about uh, taking a, a project or, or something and saying how can we value it in terms of the cash outflows and the, turn, the cash inflows. So let's use an example here. So we've got some project at our firm that we're trying to make a decision. Do we, do we accept this project or reject it? Okay, we only have so much money at the firm, so we have to be judicious about how we spend it. And we need to know, okay, is this, is this something that, that we think we should do or not? And so how do we go about making that decision? Well, we can look at the cash flows associated with this project. So, so let's look at, in terms of time periods, Let's have, look at, let's say this is time period zero. And we got time period one, that's the end of year one, end of year two, end of year three, four, and five. So let's say this project ends at year five. It's a five year project. We're debating whether we wanna take it or not. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna map out these cash flows. So let's say that the project is going to cost us initially in period zero, so this is upfront, period zero is right now, let's say it's gonna cost us $10,000 that we're gonna to have to invest to get this project going. We have to buy a machine or something or, or whatever. Let, let's not really get into the details, but $10,000 we have to lay out in order to start this project. So that, that goes right here. So that's negative. That's a cash outflow. Uh, this is a negative number, okay, so $10,000 it's an outflow. But now we want to think about the inflows of this. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll say that we'll have in, in year one, uh, let's say that we'll have inflows of $2,500. Okay. Now that's, that's positive. That's going to get, this is going to get added uh, ultimately. Uh, and then we have in year two, uh, this project, if we accept it, will generate $4,000 cash and then uh, 5,000 in, in period three, uh, 3,000 in period four, and then the final period, uh, it'll generate $1,000 of cash. So what we want to look at is we want to look at the cash flows, uh, and, and we want to say, okay, let's find a way that we can somehow account for the time value of money, because we know that $1,000 in period five is not worth $1,000 today, uh, and we want to somehow net these these cash inflows with the cash outflow. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we are going to have to calculate the net or the present value of each cash inflow. We can't just use an annuity formula because the cash uh, inflows are a different number in each period. So what we'll do is we'll treat each one uh, as a single cash flow and then go ahead and discount it back to what its value is at period zero. And we don't have to discount the negative 10,000 because we know that negative 10,000, uh, that, that's negative 10,000 today. So we don't have to worry about that one, but we have to, we're gonna have to discount uh, the other cash flows here. So what we're gonna ultimately have is an equation that is gonna look like this. So our net present value is gonna be equal to negative 10,000 Again, we do not need to discount that because 10,000 today is 10,000 today, so we don't have to worry about that. But then we're gonna add to that the cash inflows, but discount it. So we've got the 2,500 that we get at the end of period one, but we have to discount that. Uh, so let me just go ahead and rewrite the formula for present value uh, of, of a single cash flow. Uh, that's C being the cash flow over 1 plus R uh, to the T. And in period 1, of course, T is 1, so we don't even, we don't even concern ourselves with that. And then also, just a side note, we're going to need a discount rate here. And we'll say that the discount rate, uh, we could have earned, um, let's say that we could have earned 6% uh, on an investment uh, with a similar risk. That's our opportunity cost. We're going to need that to calculate uh, this uh, this this formula here. So we're going to use this formula 
And now we're going to calculate the present value of that $2,500 at the end of year one. So we've got the $2,500 in the numerator. Uh, and then in the denominator, we're going to have 1 plus R, and we know the R being 6%, 1 plus R is going to be 1.06. Okay, now the year two's cash flows of $4,000, we're going to have to treat that as a separate cash flow. Okay, now that's going to be discounted back two periods because that's two years from now, so it's to the second power at t, the time period. Now for the third period we've got 5,000 in terms of the cash flow but we're going to have to discount that back three periods. And then we've got at the end of year four we get three thousand dollars and we'll discount that back four periods and then finally at the end of the project we get a cash inflow of a thousand dollars which will dis back, uh, discount back five years. So ultimately, this formula here is going to yield uh, our net present value. Okay. Now, and then we'll talk about in, how to interpret that and what we're going to do with it in a moment, but let's just go ahead and, and finish out these calculations. So this net present value is going to be equal to that, that negative 10,000 that we incur up front to start this project. Uh, and then all these cash flows here, when we add that all up, it's going to add up to $13,239. So now we put, now this is where the net part comes in. We net these together. We're netting the cash outflow. This is, this is going out at the beginning of the project. And then we've got the inflows. This is the discounted value of the inflows. We take it together. Uh, and that's going to give us $3,239 is the net present value of this project. Well, what does that mean and how do I interpret it? Well, in general, uh, assuming that the company has enough cash to do the project, what you want to do is you want to use a, a kind of rough rule here of if the MPV is greater than zero, then accept the project. Accept. So, and then of course 3,239 is greater than zero, so we would accept by this rule. Now let's explain uh, th this rule here uh, in a little more detail. What is this saying if the net present value uh, is greater than zero? Well, remember, remember our uh, our discount rate that we chose of of six percent. Well, ultimately, we can kind of view that as an opportunity cost, this 6%. Uh, if we don't invest the money uh, in this, this project here, if we don't spend it there, well, it could be somewhere else. Maybe uh, you could have invested it in stocks or bonds or something that would have earned us uh, this 6% return. So, so the capital is not free. The money to do this project is not free. It could have been deployed elsewhere to earn a return. Uh, and so when the MPV is greater than zero, uh, what this is basically saying is that we have added value to the firm above and beyond the 6% that we otherwise could have done with that money. So. By, by accepting this project, we're actually earning a return uh, to the firm that is higher than this discount rate that we were thinking about, higher than the opportunity cost. So we could have made 6% elsewhere. Did we do better than that? That's what we're trying to figure. And if the MPV is greater than zero, then the answer is yes, we did do better than that. And so we need to accept the project.